Hello, welcome to a presentation on Solaris 11 package management. I'm your host, Gabriel Smith. This will more likely be a two part presentation. This first portion will just go over the commands and we'll <clears throat> go over a couple of slides and talk about package management. And the second presentation, if I decide to do it, it will be a command line walkthrough. The scope of this presentation is to introduce you into package management and to get you started so that you can start managing the software in your system. What's out of scope of this presentation is that there's several commands well, there's a package management system in, Pat in Solaris 10. We'll review that. We won't go into details. Linux versus Solaris. As you know, Linux is the shooting star of the IT world or the operating system world in, in terms of information technology management. And it is just kind of uh, taking the world by storm. Solaris 11 which was formerly well Solaris was a Oracle product it was it actually used to be a Sun product now it has been bought out by Sun and it's now owned by uh, Oracle they actually introduced several features in Solaris 11 that uh, directly compete with Linux two of these are the known desktop and the other is the Linux package management system I'll say this now because I don't see it in, in any of the slides after this. In Linux, you would manage your package or the software on your system using YUM. The equivalent of that in Solaris is PKG. And I'll get into that later. The objectives of this presentation is to look at what patching was patching and packaging was like in Solaris 10, talk about IPS talk about publishers, repositories, and archives, S compare Solaris 11 to Linux, and show you how to get information about packages, talk about the packages as they relate to the boot environments, installing and update packages, and uninstalling packages. And for the most part, there are many slides in this presentation I'm going to try to burn through. There's a few situations where I'll just read right off the page, though. And this is one of them. In the past, Sun Microsystems described packages as a group of software, files, and directories, which includes related softwares and installation scripts. The commands that you would have used in Solaris 10 would have been package add, package check, package remove, package info. These commands still work in Solaris 11. In the past, some microsystems describe patches as a collection of files and directories that replace existing files and directories that prevent proper execution of software. Some patches contain product enhancements. So some of the commands that you would have used to manage patches, again, there's a difference in Solaris 10, there would have been a difference between packages and patching. So some of the commands that you would have used to manage patching would have been show rev, patch add, patch remove. For the most part, these commands don't work in Solaris 11. Now, what's happened is that in Solaris 11, they've lumped packaging and patching together. And they deliver these through a system called Image Packaging System, or IPS. And I'm just going to read right off the page for you. IPS or image packaging system is a framework that enables you to list, search, install, update, and remove software packages from, from the Oracle Solaris 11 operating system. A single IPS command can update your image to a new operating system release. IPS packages are stored in IPS package repositories, which are populated by IPS publishers. The bulk of the packages are managed via command line tools, while most can be managed via two GUI name, two GUIs named Package Manager and Package Update Manager. Now, these are the GUI tools that you would see in the known desktop, and the known desktop is what's typically used in most Linux distributions. This is one of the ways that Oracle has decided to piggyback on the Linux revolution, if you will. These two GUIs or graphical user user interface look exactly the same 
and other Linux distributions as they do in Solaris 11. These two tools allow you to list, search, install, restrict installations, list, add, remove package publishers, update an image to a new operating system, create or copy package repositories, create and publish packages, create boot environments. All of these, well, the image packaging system, when they create a package to be delivered, when a publisher creates a package to be delivered in the image packaging system, he creates what's called a manifest for that package. And a manifest, and to make a long story dull, is a product description. It's going to tell you everything that is going to be contained in that package. In Solaris 10, they introduced something called the Fault Management Resource Identifier. They did this with the Solaris uh, Service Manager uh, console, so to speak. I can't remember the actual uh, the functionality, but basically in Solaris 10, I'm sorry, Solaris 10, Solaris 10, you would start and start a service using uh, SVCS, I'm sorry, SVCS, and basically that's a command that you, that comes with the fault management uh, resource management tool, and they have a system that they use to identify one service from another. They've taken that functionality and they've imported it into image packaging uh, in the image packaging system. So basically, the FMRI or the Fault Management Resource Identifier is a way to identify one package from another. You could have, uh, let's say, Solaris Desktop package, and then maybe a few months later they would come out with another. Uh, or update of that desktop and you know using the fault manager resource identify is a way of to identify exactly why well, a way to identify packages from another so the syntax is basically the scheme the publisher the package name the version and the date and time so in it, here's an example of a, a package under the FM, FMRI scheme and basically it tells you it's a package, the publisher is Solaris and it's an Ethernet it's an Ethernet driver and this is the revision number and this is the time and date 2012, 723, so on and so forth a publisher is a personal organization that provides packages, a repository is where packages are kept, a package archive is a file that contains uh, publisher information and I'm going to have to speed this up. I'm just going to go through a few, skip a few slides. This is the update manager that you would see in the known desktop. This is the package manager that you would, you, you would normally see in the Linux desktop. To install the package, you would use PKG. I'm sorry. <clears throat> to search for a package, you would use PKG search. And this example, we're looking for Wireshark. Here's the results of that command. I'm not going to stay on this page long, so just pause the video if you need. PKG, PKG list is the this command is used to tell you if a package is installed. The syntax is PKG list with the space, and then you, you basically put the name in the, of the package. Here's an example: PKG list star desktop. We're basically looking for anything with the name desktop in it and we put quotes in so the command is passed to the the ah uh, oh uh, tongue tie basically we put quotes around it so the information is passed to the command and not to the shell actually let me go back a slide or two okay so you should notice that there's a column called IFO I is if the package is installed F is for the package is frozen and no is if the package is obsolete To get, there are additional options that you can use with the PKG list command. These options are A, S, V, V for getting the fault management resource identifier, S lists only the package name and, and a summary, and list A lists all the available updates. Here's an example of the different options. To get more information about a package, you want to use PKG info. 
and then provide the package name minus R will retrieve information from the repository. Here's an example of a PKG info minus R and we're doing this on the Solaris desktop packages. It gives you a bunch of information that you can use including this including the state which tells you whether or not it's installed. You can use different options with I'm sorry, PKG contents minus RM will retrieve package the package manifest. So I'm just going to show you the results of this command. So we did PKG contents minus T, which will give you more attributes. Well, you can choose what attribute you want to get information about. And we wanted to get information about the file. And as you can see here, we use different switches that gave us the owner, the group, mode, and the size. Okay, so Solaris 11 uses this thing called boot environments. And basically, a boot environment is an instance of an operating system. It allows you to boot into multiple versions of the operating system. This is useful if you want to test the installation of a particular package. Uh, to find out how many different boot environments you have, you type BAtom list. And here's a result of the BAtom list. You can see we have one, two, three, four different instances of uh, a boot environment on our system. And when you boot up your, your machine, you would see all these boot environments as the options to boot into. To install a package, you type pkg install minus nv. In this example, we're going to do pkg install minus nv Wireshark. And here is the result of that. The minus NV option is going to do a mock install in verbals and it's going to tell you everything that would happen if you install this package. If you want to install it into a particular boot environment, you use the boot environment option, which is dash dash BE and then the next. Uh, dash dash BE dash name, and then you provide a name. And this example, I pretended I was doing a change request and I basically type chgreq and then put the change request number and then wireshark is the package that I'm installing. Uh, here's the output from that command. You can see that we have a new boot environment that was created from that uh, command and it's going to be active uh, for the next reboot. If we want to make another operating uh, instance a boot environment active, we use BADM, B, B Atom, activate, and then we just list the boot environment we want to make act, active in case we didn't want to make that uh, new installation of the Wireshark uh, boot environment active. We want to maybe keep what we had. We use the B Atom activate uh, command. To uninstall a package, is it's really easy. You just use the command PKG uninstall and the package name in this case Solaris desktop. Here's an example of that and this is it. This video is 13 minutes. I hope it fits on YouTube. For the most part if you need any uh, anything from me, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, email me busy386 at gmail.com